Alrighty guys, what's up man? Uh, I'm here with Tony Cowden and uh, we're gonna go on ahead and go into a live stream So let's see if we can get some people up in here real quick There should be some people coming in here in a few Cause I have people coming over from your page Cool So, yep Yeah, we got on You ready? I'm with it Alrighty, so um, I wanted to, uh, I, I came out here, Tony uh, blessed me with the opportunity to come out here Kind of just hang with him, shoot with him for a bit, and I wanted to do a live stream with him before I left from here. And so the first thing I want to do is introduce uh, Tony. Um, basically, off of his bio, Tony is a soft veteran. He is the owner of Capable Incorporated, correct? Mm -hmm. He is a strength and endurance trainer, and also uh, focused on marksmanship. So if you want to kind of give us a little bit of a background of like what you do. Yeah, I mean, um, so before I started teaching more civilian stuff and once I kind of got on Instagram or whatever, I owned a gym in Wilmington while also doing work for various government agencies and that sort of thing. And most of my training as far as shooting and stuff went was for those agencies and their personnel. I had never really got into teaching civilians. Uh, a couple of years ago, I grew the gym to as large as it could. I kind of got tired of living in town. Um, Wilmington's a great town. It's a college town with a beach problem. Um, single guys love it. Uh, and, but I had grown very, very tired of being in the town and city. So bought a place, built a range, and um, I started uh, getting into USPSA. So I started interacting a lot more with civilians and started teaching civilians to shoot. And they seemed to really dig it and like it. And so here we are. <laughs> so, so what drives this passion? Because I, I can say from my experience of being out there with you and you, you know, you have a, a great ability to communicate with people, relate with people, you know, you, you give me the feeling that I can be better than what I am. And so I see that there's this passion that you have for what you do and where, do, where did that develop? Because of course coming from military to civilian world can be a, a big change. Yeah, uh, it is, it is for some guys. Um, I, I, I never had any issues. <laughs> uh, you know, just interacting with regular people. You know, a lot of military guys are like, oh my God, I miss my buddies, I miss the atmosphere, I miss the brotherhood and all that stuff. Hey man, I like interacting with people. Right. Uh, you don't have to be some special operations dude. You know, for me, I, you know, the, you know, as you can tell, I like analogies. So, you know, the Bible says that you should treat everyone as if it's Jesus himself. Right. Um, so, Lord knows, you know, with people, kind of being anti-religion and anti-Christianity these days, I kind of morphed it and says, man, I, I try to teach everyone I meet as if they know the one thing that could lead to my happiness. Right? right? Mm -hmm. They know that thing. So that could be a homeless person. People think it's crazy I give homeless people money. Um, I don't care, man. You know, like, you know some stuff I don't. Like, we're already talking about running. You know more about running at a high performance level than I do. I've never ran my fastest 5k is like 18 minutes you know what i mean which you know that you've done it in 15 dude holy crap you know so you know some stuff about running i right. don't now genetically speaking i will never and probably would have never even in my running days when i was a little younger maybe a little closer to your age and your build even then i couldn't run a 5k as fast as you have so you know like on the range so you know what's my passion man i like seeing people get better so when i'm training people for in selection or and I still have a lot of clients so I have about mm -hmm. 60 clients that I train online uh, for physical things uh, ultra marathons I got to a couple uh, young couple who are training for the Moab 240 the male in the couple he did the 666 challenge last year I trained him with that so I love that stuff man I love helping people I love people seeing people be successful I'm I mean we see it on, on Instagram all the time right and we were talking about you know our, our mutual acquaintance and friend Lucas people Rag on Lucas Bakken, man. I see nothing but a successful, great young man. Right. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. all I see in that guy. And I've interacted with him face to face. I've shot with him. I've become, and now I consider him my friend. He's not just an acquaintance. Somebody I met on Instagram. I don't, I don't have that attitude. I'm not jealous. I'm not envy, envious of anyone on this planet. You know, some people have some stuff I would like to have. So instead of being like, you know, a hater, to use the colloquial term. I call it being insecure and jealous, envious. Right, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, I don't have that. When I see someone that's successful and they have done something that I want to do, or even even if it's not something I want to do, it's just badass, you right. know, freaking like fly a 
jet airplane. That's badass. I don't hate on people for that. You know, if a young man is successful at whatever he's done, I want to know how he did it. Right? You know, I pay, tell me what you see. So when I see Lucas shoot, I don't say, oh, that's a civilian with no military background. I'm like, I want to know what that guy knows. Right. You know what I mean? Like, how did this guy learn to shoot that well? You know? And it's, and it's all perspective. <laughs> right. And, you know, when we were on the range, it's all perspective about how, you know, how you were telling me, you know, um, confirm your sights, have your um, have your hand on the wall when you confirm your sights. All this is it's just the way you look at things. Mm -hmm. And you know, just like how you were saying earlier, he mentioned to me, shooting is not complicated. It's it's not. And and honestly, a lot of it is we complicate things. I mean, and I even in my everyday life, I complicate things. You know, we know what we have to do, yeah. but we do everything else around it to avoid doing what we have to do. It's yeah. a it's a, it's a human thing. Of I think things. I think people miss sometimes they miss the, a crucial part. Uh, in my one minute clips on Instagram. Right. This one crucial part is that everything I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you doesn't work, I've done. Right? Like, I so many of the old ways of shooting, I learned them that way. Like, people, I'm like, I, sometimes I get a little frustrated when people come to the page and they, you know, 22 year old shooter, he's got, I've shot more in the last three weeks than they have in their whole life. And they're like, well, but you should try X and Y. And I'm like, yeah, man, I did when I was your age, and that was 20 years ago, you know? And I, try, I don't want to be in it. That's not being a butthole, it's just a fact, you know? Right. And, you know, I think a lot of people miss that sometimes is that, like, front sight focus. It's still very common to teach people to front sight focus. And it'll, they'll caveat it with, well, beginners need to. And I'm like, no, they don't. You want to know how I know? Because I trained more people in the last month than most people, you know, shoot bullets. Um, and I see it, I put it into practice. I watch people improve. So when you, you know, I was taught front sight focus, but then I was told, and I realized that I wasn't doing it anymore. As you get better and you get faster, you know, when that gun's cycling, let's face it, if you shoot a, a bill drill in 1.6 seconds, right? So you, you get the gun out, your first shot breaks at 0.8, and in point, another 0.8 seconds, you You're break right. six rounds out. It is impossible to focus on your sights because they're moving nonstop right. and they're moving very fast. You can't focus on it. So you're seeing your sights even when you're not in focus. So target focus just makes sense. And that's just an example of things that I have learned over the years that were common knowledge. They were taught a certain way 20 some years ago. Went through my first shooting package in 1998. Right? Things have changed a lot. And I think that's important for people to realize. And that, that's, I like seeing people improve. To answer your question, I like seeing people improve. It's fun. I enjoy watching you out there. You, you know, knocking those steel down, man, the smile on your face, you know, um, and, and because there's not a lot of new things for me in shooting, right. so I don't, I don't get that giddy, right, yeah. but I get it by watching through other people. Right. I love seeing that smile on people's faces when it clicks, that light bulb comes on, you know, it's cool, it's just cool. And I, I learned, and I think one of the most important things that I learned from shooting with him today is that you know, when you watch these videos, don't just look from a third person perspective, but rather also think if I was him, what is that gun doing and what is he doing to make sure that what he's talking about is going to happen? And because that's, you know, they, they use the term cognitive rehearsal, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the you know, athletes, gymnasts, right? USPSA shooters, you see them walk the stage in their mind before the buzzer goes off. Um, and it's the same way. I can imagine my gun, I can imagine everything my gun does, right? Whether it's my open gun, but I can also imagine and feel my Glock 34. And there's a difference, quite a bit of a difference, right? But I can see, I can imagine shooting my open gun with a red dot or switching to a Glock with iron sights. Or, right now, I can imagine, I can cognitively rehearse shooting a 300 Win Mag at an 1800 meter target. Cognitive rehearsal is something that is so important to any athletic endeavor, and I think it's a crucial thing that's that's missing. Um, but any of your top shooters talk about it, and I think that's a huge thing that's missing in the tactical shooting world. Um, there's a lot of things that are missing in the tactical world that your average B class shooter knows in competition. Right. It's it's funny. I mean, if you don't know the classifications, you got grandmaster. Right, mm -hmm. master and A, B, C, and D shooters, and folks don't realize it, man. The average police officer is a 
D shooter, if they're lucky. The average special operations person, high C, maybe a low B shooter. Depending on how they train. Yeah. 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 If all they're doing is just going to the shooting package once every year, every two years, they might be a, a decent C shooter. You have to shoot on your own and practice shooting to become an A level shooter. Yeah, I, I, I specifically, I want to shout out to my man, uh, Tuan underscore Wick on Instagram. Uh, Tuan, one of the guys that I shoot with. And he would tell me that after, you know, even after what they would do, you know, on the military, on military base and stuff, they would go. So, like, I know, you know, uh, 37 PSR, mm -hmm. and they would shoot and shoot and shoot. And, and you know, honestly, they, and I like that you said that because it applies to me as college as well. I'm studying mechanical engineering, and part of the thing that they stress to us is not just what you do in the classroom, but you got to go home and fill in the gaps. You got to go home and you got to study. You got to look over everything, you mm -hmm. know. And, and sometimes the truth is you're not going to learn everything off the videos that you post. It's a great starting point, and it's a great, mm -hmm. it's a great thing to write down and take with you yeah. to the range. But when you go to yeah. the range, you have to if, apply it. You know, I get a lot of DMs, man. I still answer all my DMs. It's getting more and more difficult. Um, I, I enjoy Instagram because it's mostly a positive place. I, I deserve very, very little room for the negative interactions. I usually just mm -hmm. shut people down. And that's why people say I'm a butthole, but you choose if I'm a butthole to you or not. So I don't have time for that stuff. I'll shut down people really quick and just be like, you're stupid, get off my page. <laughs> and, uh, but that, yeah, that if you went through my Instagram, when I started posting shooting stuff about two, two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and you watched posts, you would know everything I know about shooting. But I get DMs and people ask me about, hey, I'm shooting low and to the left. And I'm like, check my, my page. I literally posted check about page. Brooke right, right, right. once last week. And if you just would scroll through and look, like if you went through the last six months of my Instagram post, you would learn everything I know about shooting. When I shoot with somebody one day on the range, I teach them everything I know about shooting. Can they execute it? Maybe not. But I don't have a beginner class. I don't have an advanced class. Beginners and advanced shooters need to know the exact same things. It's in the execution that shows their level. Right, the whole crawl, walk, run method—it's horseshit. You can learn in series, one step. That's crawl, walk, run. Human beings can learn more than one thing at once. Right, right? and the military does that to people. You go through a course for one thing, and then you go through another course for another thing. Right. In college, you go through numerous courses, learning more than one thing. thing. That's right. learning in parallel. All building up to one goal. Right. So if your ultimate goal is to be able to shoot really well on the move and combine all the things that need to be successful, whether it's competition or combat, you have to learn things in parallel, not in series, or you're going to spend the next 15 years and you won't even be close to ready. Right? Right. It's got to be, and that, that's a concept of education that the tactical world is missing. Over. And honestly, it's smarter because... You know, I, one thing I've learned is the difference between standing still and moving and shooting fundamentals change drastically once you've got your once you've got your body moving. Mm -hmm. Because now, when you're standing and shooting, you're you're isolating. You can isolate everything, mm -hmm. and then when you start moving, you know you have that adrenaline. You have that mm -hmm. that natural. I want to rush this. I want to mm -hmm. rush that. And then you know you got a gun a explosion going off in your hand. Now it's time to reconsider mm -hmm. some things and adjust some things. Yeah. There. And that's that whole prep side press I was telling you, when you start shooting and moving, the next time you shoot and move, if you can remind yourself to prep that trigger, and as those sights move around, as you take a step, there's a point in every step you take that the gun doesn't move. And the deal is, learning that movement, so when it does hit that pause, that little lull, it's on the target and you smash the trigger. And so we've spoke about, you said a cognitive in, in hurts, she said? Rehearsal. A rehearsal, yep. cognitive rehearsal. We talked about application, you know, taking what you see and going on to the range. If you can give me three more, what do you think are things that prevent us or are needed in order for people to become better shooters on if they're on their own? Most, I would say most shooters in America today, right, they get their pistol, bought their Glock, they go to Walmart and buy three boxes of ammo or two boxes of ammo, right? And they go to the range and they put a target up and they just blast a bunch of holes. Right, they're not really working on technique. Now, if they're hitting their paper, hey man, it's probably good enough for most encounters, most self-defense encounters. Most of the stuff that goes into shooting is not shooting. A draw, it's not shooting. Drawing your gun out of a holster, whether it's concealed, 
outside of work, it doesn't matter, in a bag, that's movement. It is no different than taking your phone out of your pocket and looking at it. That's just movement. It isn't until the sights on the target and you start manipulating the trigger, your finger is touching the trigger, that you have begun to shoot. Right? So, most shooters, that's all they do. The shooting part's really easy. Combining it with the movement, that's the difficult part, as you just mentioned. All of the movement we do that supports shooting can be done in dry fire. In the comfort of your own home, in the air condition, you know, and you don't even have to buy special little dry fire targets. So you can just, I don't know, put a pasty or a piece of tape Because the only thing that changes is control. Exactly. If the gun still works the same way, your body so you, still reacts yeah. to things in the same way, yeah. but you just lack control. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, man, transitions, the draw, uh, reloads, any manipulations that don't involve actually pressing the trigger can be done and should be done in dry fire. Because uh, ultimately, movement... No, in any sport, right? In mm-hmm. any sport we do, movement has to facilitate our goal, right? Any movement that does not facilitate our goal should be eliminated, and movements that, more than one movement that do facilitate our goal should be combined as most as possible, right? So, so facilitate, combine, eliminate under movement. And all the movements we do work to putting sights on the target so we can shoot. So... If I can prep the trigger to the wall during a draw, that's two movements that I just combined. Those movements facilitate getting rounds on targets. Now, if my draw is like casting or bowling, that's excess movement that should be eliminated and right. refined into a very, you know, with the draw, I just tell people, put your hands on your hips, point at the target, there's your draw. It's the same thing like the exercise you're doing with the circles and moving, you're utilizing that time. 90 10, exactly. And so we we spoke a little bit. It says dry fire has been a massive part of my increase in proficiency over the last two years. I mean, even when uh, Lucas did that video with uh, Laiku, I mean, that kid. That was amazing stuff. It's, it's insane. Yeah. And all he does and essentially is I don't know why people fire. were surprised. I honestly, to this day, like, there were people like, oh, oh, you know, airsoft or whatever it's called, it doesn't work. And I'm like, why wouldn't it work? <laughs> right? Like, because the shooting part is the easy part. Right, controlling recoil, just all it is, controlling recoil is just putting your sights back on the target so you can shoot again. As you get better, you can do that faster. So that's all Liku, that's all he had to learn. He already knew how to throw the gun around and stuff, and all he did is, we were talking about this earlier, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't speak English. So he watches Lucas's videos, has no idea what he's talking about. He just copied him. Visual learners, it's like deaf athletes. They are visual learners. They don't get a chance to ask you to repeat. What did you say, coach? Right. Could you repeat that, please? They say it again? Yeah, they can't hear They don't it. get that. They get to watch it one time, and then they have to try to re- repeat it. And that's some awesome stuff. And that's what, that that's a, that, that whole experiment with Liku is amazing. I've gotten to talk to Lucas about it. And, and it, yeah, it was, what an amazing experience. And, you know? I, and, you know, I remember when I saw, when Liku got first introduced into uh, the American, I want to say American gun industry, and coming into America and a lot of people picking up on him, a lot of hate, a lot of, of negativity. But, you know, honestly, I hate when I see people do that because that's the, that's the stuff that prevents people from becoming better because they're so focused on crashing on somebody else, mm-hmm. they forget to get up off their own couch on their phone yeah. and go outside and do and, right. and try to get better. And, and, you know, and that's what I was telling you earlier. Like, when I get that negative stuff um, from people... My tendency, because I didn't come from the most friendly workplace, right. right? Like these days, you can file a hostile work environment, you know, report with HR. There's no HR where I grew up. <laughs> it was like, oh, really, man? You want a fist fight? And, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, fist fighting was that's how we solve problems, you know. And or if all else failed. And then now you're in so the break now it's day. hard for me you're not to yourself. just on Instagram to be like, okay, fucked hard. Excuse my language. You know, if you're so awesome. Show us. Right. Why don't you post any videos of you shooting? You know? How about registration is still open for whatever USPSA area championships. I'll pay for your entry free. We'll squad together. And if you can beat me, cool. Now I'll take your advice. Because I only... But I try not to be that guy. You know? It's hard. Sometimes I just want to tell people to sh- You know? Like, I get it. You read some stuff or you watched YouTube. You think you're a ninja. You're not. All right? right? 
So, but I try not to approach things that way, and I'm getting better. I think I'm getting better. I'm trying to get better. And only focus on people who want to learn. When I ran my gym, when I first opened it, whenever someone would leave or cancel their membership, I was like, oh my God. And then I adopted the approach of, okay, they don't want my coaching. They don't want it, right. I'm only, I'm only going to focus on the people that show up each day. Right. If you don't show up, okay, not a problem. Move on. I only want to focus on people that want my help. So either you value what I'm saying or you don't. And if you don't, I don't care. It's a choice to get wrapped up in that negativity. Right. Um, and it's a choice just to be positive. And I made that choice a long time ago. I mean, I could be an angry asshole vet, you know? We talked about PTSD a little, a little earlier, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. I don't, I don't suffer from, do I have scars, trauma from combat and all that? Probably. Do I suffer from PTSD? Absolutely not. Not one bit. Not one bit. And you know, uh, I think... And it, because I made a choice. I think I'm, the greatest tool you can have is, and I put this on my resumes all the time, my ability to learn. You know, and mm -hmm. I, you know, you were speaking about the gym, and I remember watching this clip from Tim Kennedy. You know what? He uh, he posted, and he was like, you know, some people leave, mm -hmm. and it's because they get so they be, they get broken so much. But it's the perspective, you know. He yeah. was like, in order for you to grow, you have to get broken. It's like yeah. muscle yeah. training; you have to break your muscles yeah. in order for it to Here, grow. Here's if if I if you handed me your resume, let's say I was somebody accepting resume, and you said I have the ability to learn, that would catch my eye. But I would rather see I have the willingness to learn. And why is that? Think about the two words. I have the ability. Well, I have the ability to fly the fucking space shuttle. <laughs> right? But I have the willingness. Like, I want to. It's a, I have the desire to. It's just words. And the only reason I'm saying that is because the only reason I have you out here today is because you're young, uh, willing to learn, Young man, I looked at, and there's, there's, there's numerous reasons, right? When I watch, I don't even remember how we first interacted. I don't even know if you DM me and ask me a question or what. But I don't know. You kept popping up on my, my page, and I gave you a follow. Um, and, and so let's, you know, just to be straight up in front, right? You're a 19-year-old black man in America today who wants to shoot guns. And it was just like we were talking about, you know. You're rolling down the road. With an AR in your trunk and guns, and yeah. it's a profile, right? That's it is. you know, and mm -hmm. you get pulled over for speeding. That could be hit or miss, man. You know what I mean? That's I am aware of that, right? And mm -hmm. I, I'm not beating up on cops. I don't know if cops are racist or not, but I know that cops are scared these days, you know, for whatever reasons, you know. And, and let's face it, uh, there's a lot of crime in the black community, in the inner cities, and all that kind of stuff. So when I see you a young black male that's going to college who wants to learn to shoot, I see you as a future representative of the gun community that America needs. Not the gun community, right? The gun community's got, um, uh, what's his name, NRA guy. Um, the other black guy in the gun world. Coleon Noir. There we go. Yeah, Coleon Noir. <laughs> Noir, Mr. Noir, right? Which I don't think is his real name, is it? It derives from his real name, no, but it's okay. weird. It's um, weird. And, and you know, and some people give him a hard time and stuff, but I think his motives are great. Uh, point being is that was my motivation for interacting with you. I'm like, this is what America needs in this time as we move forward. We need to show that young men can be responsible, no matter race or creed or religion or any of that shit. Um, and that's why I was like, okay, yeah, man, I'll make time for you. Uh, and that's why I brought you out here, or, or invited you out here, mm -hmm. you out here. And um, like you said, the ability to learn, yes, but you obviously have the willingness to learn, mm -hmm. right? Because you drove three hours to yeah, come out here and just yeah. hang out with my dumb ass. Um, and uh, so for viewers wondering, like, why would Tony Cowden, the special forces dude, hang out with a college kid? Because you guys are important. You guys are important. Why does Tony Cannon hang out with Lucas? Because he's important. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I'm not kind of some kind of special operations snob. There's no doubt in my mind, if you set your mind to it, you decided tomorrow you wanted to join the military and go to selection, you can do it. How do I know? Because that's who passes selection, people who decide to. Everything's a decision. People who can make decisions and execute, follow through, they're successful. 
Right. So and anyway, that, and that's we, my we and that's my motive from... and that's my motivation because <laughs> yeah. you know I realize I am I am the the future gun owner. It says if anyone gets the opportunity to take a class from Tony, do it. Mm. Yes, sir. America mm. thinks the, uh, the gun mm. culture is one demographic, older white men. Reality is, gun community is very diverse. And honestly, you know, honestly, I, I I've come to believe that as a as a country, we continue to push you know racism. You know, we have to push. Me and Jalen, actually, when we were going to my neighborhood, I'll never forget, we saw this big, I'm not trying to, just describing, it was a big, chunky white dude with a small black kid. And they were just chilling on the sidewalk talking. And yeah. it's that stuff that I love to see. But, you Man. know, when you post a picture of that, you always have that crowd of people saying, this and this and that, and yeah. this and this and that. We cannot continue to do this. So, you interact with Guns and Code? I do. What a great dude, man. I don't know if you know his story. He took a class from me and came out and shot with me one day and told me his story. It's from Oakland. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, this is a programmer and that sort of thing. He speaks a language I don't speak. <laughs> what a great dude. He's a big dude, too, man. He's a big guy. He's, like, got the coolest voice, man. He's got, like, Don Vader's voice. Dude. Yeah. I, I questioned. Dude, I was like, because I know he does the iPhone thing where you can make the face. Uh -huh. And I'm like, yo, is, does that come with it? And no, I go on man. my phone, and he's like. Yeah, like, when he no, started talking man. to me, I was like. <laughs> Oh man, you sound like like you could be like the coolest new Darth Vader, bro. What a great guy, man! I, I, and that's what's cool about Instagram, and that's what we were talking about. I would have never met you, and so many more people. I keep for the first time now that I've started getting a little more followers or whatever. I'm starting to bump into people in places, and they know who I am. Back in the CrossFit world, because I, I was pretty successful in the CrossFit world, I could go to CrossFit gyms or CrossFit events, and people would recognize me. Um, but now it's happening in the shooting world. And I'm still kind of weird about it because I lived a very private, low-profile life. Yeah. No social medias. I mean, trying to be under the radar at all times. So this was a little different. So it took me a little bit, right? Like on Instagram, I'm sharing my home sometimes, right? right. Like my range is at my house. Man, when I lived in Wilmington, people didn't know where I lived. You know what I mean? I, that right. was that special operations culture of, you know, you don't... That people don't even know where your safe house is. The location somewhere, right, somewhere. Right. right. So now I'm like, you know what? Reality is, man, I've made some enemies. If one day they decide to come after me, man, you know what? It ain't going to be hard to find me, you know? Um, so anyway, point being is this, this whole Instagram is like, again, being positive. I get to interact with some cool people, and, and I appreciate it. Especially people who think, like, I have something to offer them. Um, I appreciate it. That's, it's, it's a positive right. thing for me. Um, and it's probably a good thing, you know, that was part of my whole, when I was talking about PTSD and that sort of thing, uh, I, uh, yeah, you better be here next Saturday, man, we're shooting long guns. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the whole PTSD thing, man, interacting with regular people, and I don't resent them, right? Like, if someone decides not to go to military and not to go to combat, I don't resent them for that. I'm like, hey, you went to college, you're probably smarter than me. Um, I'm a college dropout. You know, wound up just wanting to be a little ranger dude, you know. And um, so, I don't resent regular people for living the American life of comfort. Right? Yes, was it built on the backs of numerous generations ago? We're on cruise control. I don't resent people for it. I accept reality for what it is, and that's part of the healing process. That's a grieving process, right? The last stage is acceptance. Acceptance leads to healing. Um, and I think that's a big part of why I don't have any signs or symptoms of PTSD. I don't have dreams. I don't have flashbacks. I mean, I know that I, I, I can look back and say I've never pulled a trigger on, on somebody that wasn't a combatant. I've, I've never murdered an innocent person, not by accident, not on purpose. So I don't live with any kind of that guilt like that. Um, but the interaction with regular folks, I like it. Honestly, I hang out with a bunch of SF dudes for numerous days or weeks on end. I'm like, man, we're a bunch of assholes. <laughs> I mean, because it is such a, a, an anal community of very driven dudes, you know, and personalities. Right. I used to joke that you know, when a Special Forces ODA, there's supposed to be 12 guys, right? Mm -hmm. 12 guys, that means 16 different opinions, everyone I'm worth fist fighting about. And that math don't even add up. No. Seriously. You can have one dude with three different opinions. He's willing to fight over all of them. Sometimes with himself. <laughs> so I like interacting with regular folks, man. Yeah. You know, and it's been great. And you talk about racism. Here we are. I live out. I live 20 miles from the nearest small towns. Right. I'm an hour from Raleigh and an hour from Wilmington. You can go down to the store down the street that we talked about. And right now, 
there's probably 10 dudes sitting in their little kitchen area, you know, where you know, they have uh, seats and stuff. Black, white, Latino guys, they're just hanging out, talking. Just cool. America would have you believe that the rural parts of this country is where racism is in the South. Man, it ain't that way. I interact with people pumping gas. Hey, how's it going, man? Howdy. What's up, man? How's it going? Head nods, smiles, you know? And it's a full range of the American demographic. Doesn't matter. And, and people are just friendly. I don't I don't see the racism. I can go to Wilmington right now, go to Starbucks, in the fanciest part of town, I can hold a door and some snotty ass white lady won't even say thank you. It ain't racism, man. People are just assholes. Yeah. You know? Now, does racism exist? There's no doubt in my mind. And you can probably tell me way more about it, right? I'm well aware that I'm a white dude in America. And I don't know if white privilege is a thing, but I know that if I drove my F-250 through the low-income parts of Wilmington or Raleigh, I'm going to get a different look from a police officer than you are driving your regular sedan. Right. You know? Uh -huh. and it's not like you drive some... I don't know, a gangster looking car. You drive a regular, regular it's a Honda, Honda, right? Honda Accord. Honda, right? Yeah, you drive yeah. an Accord. Looks like a regular old Honda Accord. You're going to get a different look than me. Now, that's a full circle, right? Right. Why? It's because the cops are taking a lot of shit, right? Most cops are probably good dudes, you know, and, and ladies. It's a really bad cycle that's happening in those those places, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't, I don't know the answers for it. I just know it exists. And I don't, I don't blame young black men in America for being angry and spiteful when police officers are not nice to them. But it's a circle, right? We like, push it, right? Right. Like if you're an asshole to the police, the police are going to be assholes back to you because right. they're supposed to be authority. Have they abused that authority that's led to lack of respect? Yes. Like I said, it's completely cyclical nonstop. And that's why I don't want to be a young black man in a, you know, low-income place, no more than I would like to be a police officer having to work there. Those are two things that, man, that's just, that would be a rough life either way. You, you know, know, and I, and you you know, when you say cycle, I mean, you're right, because, you know, the way I picture that cycle is from what I, I witnessed being, you know, is that it started out with a bad encounter that got exploded on media, and then you had two, you had two separations. You had African Americans who were starting to do whip out their phone when they get pulled over or get mad or start everyone in the car is, is throwing their phone up at the dude and then you have either a cop who's like I know I'm about to get a lot of BS and I don't know what's about to go on right. and so you know it's, and you know honestly like there's so much interaction in between getting pulled over and that's what I tell people like I, I feel like one thing I didn't I didn't take in perspective when some of the first you know police brutality stuff started happening was Cops risk their lives too when they come up all to the these time. cars. The they time. don't know what's in this car. They, yep. For all they care, they go up to a car and it explodes. Earlier this year, North Carolina Highway Patrolman, who was well regarded, long time service dude, known as a nice guy. I know it was in Raleigh, stop. right? Oh, this is down in um, uh, south of Bloomington. Mm -hmm. in, um, actually, right outside of Eaglewood, <laughs> not California. Um, anyway, he pulls the guy over, walked to the car, dude blasted him, killed him on the street left them on the side of the road, dead, right then and there, you know? And the testament of the state highway patrol, when they rolled that dude up, they didn't kill him. They arrested him. Probably had a lot of guys who wouldn't kill him. I, I promise you this, when an American soldier was killed, my AO, we went after him. So for the state highway patrol to take that guy into custody after murdering one of their own, man, I don't know if I'm on that level. I, that's how it's taught. No, you man. really you have, to have, brothers, you really have to have a discipline right. and, uh, and a rule inside. Because how easy would it have been for those troopers when it they backed him in the corner to articulate that he was fighting them? He didn't. They kind of like how we're to wear body cams either. And this was their you know, strike force too. So anyway, point being is for the most part, I think most police officers are good dudes. Just like I think most even I think most crack dealers are probably pretty good people, right? Like, in a different circumstance, in a different environment, they would be a different man or, or right. woman, mm -hmm. right? In the situation they were brought up in, 
hey man, maybe college didn't make sense to, to that guy, and it was easy to sell crap. No, I mean, I've, I've ran into I'm not some, saying it's right. I've ran I'm into saying, some people who, who were on, on the stuff, and, and they even started telling, you know, you're going to be really successful. And, and honestly, you know, I don't, I don't hear that a lot. And so even though they are who they are, I mean, they, you know, they have, everyone has the potential to be good people. I think so. You know, yeah. and we all, we I, all have I, our challenges. I think there are people that are, that are animals. Right, mm-hmm. they are violent. I don't think they're evil per se. I don't think because I think evil is a uh, there's a fine like, line like between evil influence and right. from true true evil. I don't think many Americans get to see that. Even in mass shootings, I don't think that's evil at work. Right, that's that's people that because I, I feel like I've seen some borderline evil things. Um, the average American criminal took the easy route. Uh, and and it's an easy route and a, and a hard time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not really an easy route. It's easy for me to be like, oh, well, such and such selling dope, it took the easy route. And in many cases that's true, but for someone that's grown up already behind the curve that is getting a crappy public ed- education, um, surrounded by gang violence and that kind of stuff, man, socioeconomics of that is, man, selling some crack and some heroin, it makes sense. And now, like again, I'm not saying it's you know, the right. Don't thing. confuse me on Instagram. Lord knows, people put words in my mouth. Right. I'm saying I can empathize. I do not sympathize, right? But I can empathize. I can understand where they're coming from. And that, that's another thing I think that escapes people in America today. I understand why people want gun control. I don't think I think there is at a very high level a control thing with the government. But the average Sally soccer mom is getting ready to just in the last week send their third grader to school or their 8th grader to school, she is afraid. It doesn't even make any sense, statistically. Right? There's a much higher chance that her kid's going to get hit, get die in a car wreck. Right. All right? But the media is telling her that, well, with some background checks, this will all go away. With some red flags, So all, she's running toward that because she wants a solution. Right? Because Sally, the soccer mom, she is never, ever going to be able to comprehend violence. Right? The average person can't imagine, truly imagine what it's like to murder other human beings. We have inhibitions, right? Mm -hmm. Um, To target and murder other human beings, right? To go through that process, um, the average person will never know what that's like. So when you're trying to explain gun control and how that doesn't work, they don't understand violence and they don't understand criminality. The average Sally soccer mom is... The only thing they're worried about is me and my people. She wears her seatbelt because it's the law. She adheres to the speed limit because it's the law, right? So if she was going to go buy a gun, she would do it legally. She doesn't understand that criminals, right? Don't do they ain't doing any of that. So, anyway, you know, I don't know. We've been chatting, man. It's, I don't know. We hadn't answered a whole lot of questions, man. I saw Jason Pegg was up there. There he is. Fuck yeah, Honda. You know who Jason Pegg is? I don't know who Jason Pegg is. <laughs> don't worry. Hopefully he's still on here. You don't want to know that guy. It's Southern hospitality, just being nice to people. Yeah. Tony, do you do you know a Frank Proctor? I do know Frank Proctor. I don't know him very well. Uh, he actually used to work uh, at the Advanced Skills Attachments, where I actually work with Twins Group now, but he left before I got over there. Uh, I shot a match with, with Frank Proctor one day. I didn't even know he was on a different squad. I was down in Alabama. Um, so our paths have crossed. We have some very... Mutual friends, uh, close friends, a good friend of mine named Jake, and uh, is very good friends with Frank. They serve together. Um, but I've never actually interacted with Frank a whole lot. Next time I am down in Alabama, I'm going to try to shoot with Frank. I would like I would like to take one of Frank's classes um, just to see how he does things. Frank's a GM, and he's obviously a phenomenal shooter. Um, and just watching some of his videos on Instagram, and he's, he looks at things a little different than me. I'd like to know more about that. So that's a long way to answer. Uh, what made you want to get a suppressor? Um, you know what? I mean, I've shot one in my whole career, especially shooting long guns and magnums and stuff like that. It makes it so much more pleasant. Um, so it was really that. Uh, they're they're not necessary by any means, but um, I don't know. I finally just said screw it and got around and did the paperwork and all that stuff. The reason I hadn't done it for so long is because I didn't want to have to ask the government for something. Right. Where honestly, if I do want some of that type of equipment, I can always just go sign it out at work, you know? I can't keep it at home, so there's that. Uh, Jason Pegg. Jason Pegg. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, uh, so, so Jason's a combat wounded um, uh, uh, army dude. He got his arm damaged. What's up, Vic? So, but you know, we've uh, we've got a really great time to talk. I I appreciate you you know communicating with me, allowing me to yeah. come out here and, and shoot with you, and teaching me these things. You know, I I really appreciate it. And yeah. I, I tell people. Every day, I'm, I'm blessed to wake up, and I'm also blessed for everything that follows my path. For and sure. So, you know, Even the hard times. I, I really appreciate you mm -hmm. um, bringing me out here, and I, I look forward to coming back out here. Yeah. And sure. So, if you guys don't know, I kind of keep looking over our shoulder. So, see her? Miss Jay back there? Freaking, she's behind the scenes. She's taking some videos and stuff. And that's what I'm talking about. I get to meet Brandon and Jay and have some cool interactions. Um, what's the difference about Frank Parker's way and mine? You know what? Probably not very much, right? If Frank's pulling a trigger and hitting a target, and I'm pulling a trigger and hitting a target, we're probably doing it pretty much the same. Uh, when it comes to Frank, I want to know more about the way he sees movement and stuff like that. Shooting, shooting, right? So the answer to that question, that's what I want to know about uh, what Frank's doing. Frank is built like me. Mm -hmm. That's important, right? Like I shot with J the, JJ's the world champion. He's so fast. He's, well, I'll he's never cool. move like JJ. I will never so move cool. like him. Frank is bigger and taller. He's a little taller than me. Freaking so... If I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna have to move like guys like like him or Brandon Wright. Um, so anyway, that's why I'm interested in shooting with with, uh, with Frank. Give us one more question, and we're out of here. I gotta go pay attention to my girlfriend. I've been over here paying attention to your girlfriend. Uh, like not in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I've had a great time with you guys. Pretty good. It says, "What is the best way to train with you?" best way to train with me shooting or uh shooting man you go to my website if you want a one-on-one -on -one. there's a way to book uh, it, always, it shows my open days uh classes they're on there too physical training stuff uh email me go to the website capableincorporated.com and then um or you can dm me whatever just hit me up just start USPSA. Uh, just start USPSA. what is the biggest takeaways for you it's the best piece of advice I was given was from a master class shooter. He's a sandbagging master class shooter. He's really a GM. Um, <laughs> Bobby Rivera. And Bobby told me very early on, he's like, hey man, this is a game of movement, not a game of shooting. Like the shooting part's the easy part, it's the movement part. Shooting earlier, shooting later, entries, exits. It's just timing. like that video I saw of you and Lucas where you were telling him how to keep that gun up. Exactly. Exactly that. That's the best piece of advice I can give anybody is when they get into USPSA, is realizing there's very little to do with shooting. <laughs> well, I um, like I said, I appreciate you yeah. having me out here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get off of here because we both have women to attend to. <laughs> and so, uh, again, I appreciate it yeah. and I hope this isn't the last time. Uh, I won't be, here. man. You're close enough. You know where we're at. Gonna, next time we'll shoot some nighttime stuff with nods in your face okay don't get me excited now. <laughs> alrighty guys uh, thank you guys for watching I will screen record this live stream and post it on my YouTube channel also content will be coming soon which I'll send to you on your phone by the way so uh, thank you guys for watching and peace out <laughs>